Hello readers, welcome to my 14 day reading vlog. I just got back from a trip to Mexico, will post my, or link my reading vlog for Mexico up in the top corner, and now I'm in quarantine for two weeks, so that means a lot of reading and a lot of doing schoolwork and a lot of reading and a lot of hoping that I can at least get unemployment payment. I am not sure how that whole thing is working right now. My husband can work from home, I can't, but we have a very supportive neighborhood. We both work for a psychiatric residential treatment facility. Because of my husband's particular jobs, we do have a house on campus, so we live like within the facility and we have other people around us who also live within the facility. They're gonna be dropping off like cafeteria meals, helping us out with groceries if we need it. They just leave stuff at the door and we pick it up. We have to figure out a garbage system though, because I'm realizing we have to take out the garbage eventually. So we have like a small um, garbage that we can use, that we can put our bags into. And then whenever that's full, one of us is going out probably around like midnight because by then, the overnight shifts will have gone on to their um, positions. Nurses aren't usually doing rounds at midnight. If there's no emergency calls, there's not gonna be anyone around. So we're going to dress up and put on our gloves and wrap our faces in scarves or something and go take the garbage out to the dumpster and come back because we don't wanna put anyone else at risk if we happen to be sick, so. We'll see how this goes. Not the most uplifting premise for a vlog, but that's what's going in, on in my life, so why not make a video about it? Also, to lighten things up a little bit, I figured I'd pick out my book stack for the next two weeks of things that I want to get through. I have gotten a lot of stuff on Libby, but I am trying to focus a little more on my physical TBR if I can. So, let's get this started. I moved us over to my desk here because I've got a lot of the books on top that I really want to read and I've got like my books over here but I'm just gonna make a stack and start picking from it and stuff that I want to read. Now my name, which I have actually already started, but I'm gonna add it to the pile anyways. I'm only 50 pages into it and I am loving it. Highly recommend, but also it's a rather negative topic, you know, sexual assault and stuff. So if you don't want to read it right now, I totally get that. Girl, Woman, Other is a recent purchase for me because screw my low buy book goals. That's just not going to work out. Um, this, I don't know if it's supposed to be like a literary fiction or what, but I've been hearing great things and it's got a very interesting writing setup. It's written in like bits and pieces, which is something I usually enjoy, so you know, we're gonna add that to the pile. The House of Special Purpose is the next John Boyne book that I have. I'm super excited because whenever I see John Boyne, I'm like, I'ma read that. It's gonna be great. Um, Richard Wright's Native Son. This is a book that a friend recommended to me whenever we went shopping at a recent book sale together, so I should get to that. The Birds and Other Stories, Daphne du Maurier. Have to get to that, of course. I should really add some nonfiction to that list. Reading Lolita in Tehran. I've been wanting to read this for months now and just haven't picked it up. Um, I will hesitantly add Shirley to that list. I really need to get back to work on my Bronte project, but I also know this is gonna be slow read. If I can get through it, I'm not sure if it's the right book for right now, but I will hesitantly add it to the pile. Saturday is one of the books that I'm hoping to read before April. Um, because it, I bought it like last year and I want to try and take more responsibility for my purchases. I have books on my shelves that I've had for way longer, but this is like the book whenever I started my booktube channel and started taking responsibility that way. So, um, The Boys from Brazil, next Ian McEwen book. Always love me some Ian McEwen. That's a pretty decent pile for two weeks, you know? I want to add some other stuff, but I really just, I guess I just took books off the top of my desk because they are the books that I cannot wait to read. So we'll see how far down we can get this pile. Um, I'm also five hours into Us Against You. 
right now, which is the second book in the Beartown series or duology, or I think it's supposed to end up being a trilogy from Frederick Bachman. I'm still working on Normal People. I'm about halfway through that. There's another book that I have on my phone that I'm not remembering. Oh, Into the Water. That is the next Paula Hawkins thriller. I think she's only written the two so far because she also did Girl on the Train. I have a physical copy of that. I've been wanting to read it and I just haven't picked it up. And the audiobook was immediately available, so I went ahead and got that. And hopefully between those two I can kind of get something going. I'm not sure that I love to read with both an audio and a physical book, but I really try to push myself to finish my library books first when possible. So I think having it checked out from the library will kind of give me that drive to go ahead and pick up the book. Um, that's it for right now, so let's get to work. Welcome to my quarantine. We're just sitting here on my porch steps. Uh, yes, I am outside. This is my backyard and it's large enough and fenced in that I can easily stay out of everyone's way. This is a reading vlog, but for a reading vlog, I'm really not doing that much reading. Before we left Mexico, I was just so riddled with anxiety and stuff. I got a uh, like coloring page app on my phone and I have been doing that all day all the time. I did get some audiobook reading done that way. I finished Us Against You yesterday, which is the sequel to Bear Town. Very good. Not as great as Bear Town. I loved all the messages that Frederick Bachman was trying to tell us, but it was too much and I feel like he was really losing track of the story. There wasn't really a plot line to it, so it's still like four stars because his writing is amazing. But in his writing, he also tends to make mountains out of molehills if you know what I mean. So, but that's, that's kind of the reading that I've gotten done. Um, halfway through Know My Name. I restarted because I started this like before I left for Mexico and then I haven't touched it since. So I restarted 100 Little Vicious or Vicious Little Vampire Stories, which I feel like that's going to be kind of a coping mechanism for me right now. Uh, growing up, my husband, I've, I'm going off on so many tangents here. I'm sorry. But growing up, my husband had a big issue with like nightmares and sleep paralysis and reading horror books and watching horror movies was his way of coping with that to try and desensitize himself and last night it was like one o'clock in the morning and I just really wanted a creepy little story to get me out of my head so I read the first two stories on vampires loved them and I thought what I really want to do right now is watch a horror movie so I think tonight I'm gonna grab my husband and curl up and watch a really freaky horror movie because I need to see something that is worse than life right now so I can just cope with that to my neighbor's dog he just got a new Weinerimer puppy she's so cute and she's wandering around right now and I can see her anyways uh, yeah, I'm not actually getting that much reading done because I'm just doing this coloring page app on my phone all the time because I don't want to anymore. I just don't want to do anything. I am so fucking depressed right now. Not as badly as other people, not as badly as I see the kids at work, but the situational depression is just hitting me hard. In one of the video clips you'll see that we played Monopoly last night um, because it's a game that our friends and I mutually owned so they got at their board we got at our board uh, figured out what pieces we had in common so everyone got to choose a certain piece a player piece and then um, my husband and I were the ones drawing the chance and community chest cards for everyone my husband blew all of the rest of us out of water um, so it was great to see them and to hang out with them, but it also just really solidified the loneliness that I'm feeling right now. 
Uh, I did hang out with a friend today for two and a half hours. She was doing her work while I was doing chores and she gave me her Hulu login information so I got to see a Margaret Atwood documentary which has me thinking that I need to try to finish surfacing from last month. Like, you know, whenever you don't necessarily love an author or an actor, but you watch that documentary about them and you really just want to go for it again, you want to give that thing another try, that's what I'm feeling right now. So that does kind of have me in a reading mood, which is great. So good documentary for getting you in a reading mood for Margaret Atwood. Um, what else? What else? The garbage. Uh, had a small breakdown over taking out the trash last night. So we have our black kind of dumpster-ish garbage can that we keep in the shed and um, got it out whenever we got home and put it at the corner of the house. It was full of stuff so it needed to be emptied before we could put our kitchen trash into it. And I was thinking the last shift change is at 11 p.m. So after that we'll put on latex gloves and wrap our faces in scarves and go out and take out the trash. And my husband's like, no, we, we have to have someone, one of our co-workers, empty that trash bucket. And then, like, in the middle of the night, we can take our kitchen trash to the trash bucket. But then we'll probably still have to have someone else empty it from there because other people are touching the main dumpsters. So we don't want to be in the vicinity of the main dumpsters. And just thinking about that, like, everyone on social media is like, oh, it's just Netflix and chill for two weeks. You'll be fine. But it's so much more than that. It's not just the introverts are winning right now. Like, I am in quarantine for two weeks and I can't take out my own fucking trash. Like, that level, I just, I don't know. It's, it's hard right now. And I acknowledge there are plenty of people that have it worse, but what can you do? The depression is hitting me, I'm feeling lonely, and at a loss of what to do. What now, you know? But anyways, this vlog is actually supposed to take you out of the depression. <laughs> so, on to cheerier things. Continuing the video clips. Just standing up to go back inside when I remembered that I forgot to update you on another book. Normal People. I did finally finish that. I just binged it last night. Um, I think I finished it before. No, I finished it after midnight. Anyways, I finished Normal People. It was good. Um, yet another Irish author that I'm really enjoying. Sally Rooney's great. I loved the writing style, but I still have a lot of thinking to do on it. I think what I'm feeling right now is similar to what I felt whenever I re read Fates and Furies by Lauren Groff, where I, I need some semblance of a plot and there just wasn't one, but the writing is so damn good that I don't care, <laughs> you know? Uh, that's how Fates and Furies was and that's how normal people is feeling for me, where I loved the writing despite the fact that nothing really happened, nothing was really that important, there wasn't really a plot. The character development was good, um, but I still I still enjoyed myself because I I am that apparently rare bird on BookTube among bookish people where I am so so reliant on writing style. I've said that a thousand times. I'll say it a thousand more. No matter how great the story is, if the writing sucks, I won't read it. I won't enjoy myself. And in this case, and in the case of Fates and Furies. There was no story, nothing happening, nothing's important, but the writing was just so good that it didn't matter. Does that make sense? Anyways, back on to the other video clips that I promised you because I finally remembered what I forgot.
everybody. So I decided to go ahead and end this vlog at one week and then I will vlog my second week separately because in editing this video is turning out fairly long, so I should probably cut it down. Uh, just a quick update then. Saturday by Ian McEwen, I did DNF this yesterday. So many people have been like, oh, I can't wait for you to finally read this. It's really good. I really enjoyed it. I love Ian McEwen. I think his writing's great, but I was, uh, I think, 100 pages into this, and so far all we'd really learned was, here's what this guy is planning to do today. And I was just, I wasn't concentrating on it, I was getting kind of bored, so I went ahead and looked up a plot summary because I don't really care if I spoil something for myself. Um, horrible, I know. <laughs> and read the plot summary and it's just not a storyline that I'm interested in. It's, it's kind of a dialogue on war and happiness and life stuff and it's, um early 2000s, so you're hearing a lot about, like, Bush and America and war demonstrations, and that is just not something that interests me at all. So, went ahead and DNF'd this, but 100 pages into it, I gave it a good try. It'll find a good new home. Know My Name by Chanel Miller. I have not read any more of this in the last couple days. Um, I'm still kind of at the halfway point. I guess not quite not quite the halfway point, but I picked up My Dark Vanessa and just have been reading that straight through instead of going back to Know My Name, which I'm, the more I'm reading this, like, I keep thinking back to Chanel Miller's uh, book, Know My Name, and I'm really loving that I've read them together, that I'm reading them at, like, the same time. It's just adding so much to the experience. So if I haven't mentioned it already, Chanel Miller was the victim of Brock Turner. She did not remember the attack. She's dealing with all these emotions of having to go through court and therapy and stuff about this event that she doesn't have any recollection of. And it's just, it's giving so much insight into the court system and PTSD and sexual abuse and emotions and or sexual assault, and it's just, oh, it's so good. And it's kind of added this other layer as I'm reading My Dark Vanessa, in which Vanessa has a relationship with her teacher, and then the chapters go back and forth from that time to 17 years later, whenever that same teacher is being called out for sexual abuse with his students, and she's kind of, like, thinking back to her story. And they just go really well together. I might... When I finish both of these, I might just do a dual review and talk about both because I think they're really amazing to read together. Um, yeah, they're just, they're so great. I want to do reviews on both of them, so I'll probably, I'll probably just do a dual review. Also have not read any more of 100 Little, 100 Vicious Little Vampire Stories because again, I've been caught up in those other two books. I, I am not a light reader. I don't, Whenever people ask about reading for comfort, literally the only book I can think of that I've ever read for comfort or for fun. Sorry if you heard the noise in the background. My husband's working from home. Um, the only book that I remember reading for comfort is Little Women. Like, I don't read comfort books. The concept of a comfort book bores me. <laughs> So here I am in quarantine. I can't hang out with any friends. I can't go to work and I'm reading about sexual trauma. Don't know what to tell you. But that is my reading for the week. Love you all. See you in my next video. Like, subscribe, be my friend in quarantine. And yeah. Bye friends.